Good morning from St. Thomas Episcopal Church and School in San Antonio, Texas, and welcome to Morning Prayer for the morning of Tuesday, September the 12th. Today we are praying for all those who are living with war or occupation. In the Anglican Communion today, you will remember we are starting the cycle, the Anglican Communion cycle over again. We're praying for the Diocese of Abba and the Church of Nigeria. In our own diocese this week, we're praying for St. Matthew's in Kennedy and St. Matthew's in Universal City. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, for David and David, our bishops, for Mike and Allie, our priests. Just always, from wherever you are, please bring your own concerns, intentions, and thanksgivings to prayer this morning. So let's start on page 78. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. On page 79, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. And on page 82, let's say the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. I am going to take um, a bit of liberties with the Psalms today, and I'm actually going to read, we, we are going to read together a Psalm that was um, for the evening yesterday. But there's, there's a reason I want to do this. Technically, our psalm today is Psalm 45 on page 647. But I would like to read Psalm 42 on page 643. And again, for our meditation time, there is a connection here that I would like to make for you. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, a thirst for the living God. When shall I come to appear before the presence of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where now is your God? I pour out my soul when I think on these things, how I went with the multitude and led them into the house of God, with a voice of praise and thanksgiving among those who keep holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to him, who is the help of my countenance and my God. My soul is heavy within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of Jordan and from the peak of Mizar among the heights of Hermon. One deep calls to another in the noise of your cataracts. All your rapids and floods have gone over me. The Lord grants his loving kindness in the daytime. In the night season, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I will say to the God of my strength, why have you forgotten me? And why do I go so heavily while my enemy oppresses me? While my bones are being broken, my enemies mock me to my face. 
All day long they mock me and say to me, Where now is your God? Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to him, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So let's go to our readings. Our first reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, and we are in chapter 1. We're going to begin with verse 12 and go to the end of that chapter, which is verse 30. I want you to know, beloved, that what has happened to me has actually helped to spread the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard, and to everyone else, that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers and sisters, having been made confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, dare to speak the word with greater boldness and without fear. Some proclaim Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. Those who proclaim Christ out of love, knowing that I have been put here for the defense of the gospel, the others proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but intending to increase my suffering and my imprisonment. What does it matter? Just this, that Christ is proclaimed in every way, whether out of false motives or true. In that I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and with the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. It is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be put to shame in any way, but that by my speaking with all boldness, Christ will be exalted now as always in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy and faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only, live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or, an, or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing. For he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle for today is the Song of Praise on page 90. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths. In the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. In our Gospel reading today, we are going to complete the Gospel of St. Mark. And this is kind of interesting, whoops, wrong one. This is kind of interesting because there are two endings to the Gospel of St. Mark. And there is, a, we could talk a lot about why there are two endings. So, but I'm going to go ahead and read you the longer one. So we're going to begin with chapter, in, in chapter 16 with verse 1. We're going to go through verse 8, and then I am going to go, um, I'm going to skip over the shorter ending, which is, is quite brief right there, and then go on, pick up with verse 9, and go on to the end, which is verse 20. And I hope that wasn't too terribly confusing, but if you're following along in your Bible, you'll probably see all this. 
So before um, I actually do the reading, um, remember what we talked about yesterday and when I showed you the pictures of the tomb and the stone. And remember, because it's going to come up in this reading. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? And when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now after he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went out and told those who had been with him, that while they were mourning and weeping, but when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country. And they went back and told the rest, but they did not believe them. Later, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were sitting at the table, and he upbraided them for their lack of faith and stubbornness, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved, but the one who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. By using my name they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up snakes in their hands, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and set down at the right hand of God. And they went out and proclaimed the good news everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that accompanied it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle for today is a song to the Lamb on page 93. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. On page 96, let's say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And now let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And let's say Suffrages B on page 98. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. 
Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. The collect for today is the collect for proper 18 on page 233. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts, for as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And on page 99, the Collect for Peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And on page 100, our prayer for mission. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And on the top of page 102, the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And in our reflection time, um, I want to tie in our psalm, which is, As the deer longs for the water, so longs my soul, or so thirsts my soul for God. Um, there is, in Jerusalem, actually through, throughout Israel, but definitely in Jerusalem, there's a church built over all of the sites and and it's it's amazing just to go from one church to the next one many of these churches were designed by Antonio Beruzzi and he is referred to as the architect of the Holy Land um, his churches are beautiful I cannot describe I do not have the words to describe to you how beautiful they are but this one church is it borders on the Garden of Gethsemane you can no longer walk in the Garden of Gethsemane. It is still there. And you can walk around it, you can look into it, but you can't walk there. But the church next to it is called the Church of the Agony. And when we went to see it, I happened to look up, and above the entrance at the top there is a cross, and beside it are two deer. And I was like, why are those deer up there? I mean, they're, they're, that's not part of the story of, of the Garden of Gethsemane or the crucifixion or the resurrection. I mean, why are they there? And fortunately, our guide, who is quite a bit smarter than I am, said, because of the psalm, as the deer longs for the water, so my soul thirsts for God. And so, um, I want to share some photos with you of this magnificent church, which was designed by Antonio Berluzzi.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.